Okay, so someone had wanted to know, can you review cancer codes in ICD-9? And I've had a hard time picking uh, which one to use, benign, malignant, or not specified. So, you know, what I did was I just did a kind of a basics in cancer coding. So metastatic means that it's moved. So, you know, think M, move, M, metastatic. The cancer is moved from one place to another, so that's usually from one organ to another. So we've got like breast cancer has metastasized to the lung, and the cancer started in the breast, and now it's moved to the lung. So when people talk about that, they'll say the first cancer or the primary cancer. So common metastatic sites are lymph nodes, bone, lungs, and brain. So in other words, if a person has cancer and they're going to get a secondary cancer, in other words, it's going to move somewhere else in the body, it usually goes to the lymph nodes, bone, lungs, and brain. And actually, when you think about cancer, and I used to tell my students, cancer is just cells that are not um, growing normally anymore. Cells grow in a certain way, but when they're not growing normally, they mutate. So let's say, if, for example, you say your cell is a circle and then um, and it's reproducing itself, but then all of a sudden one produces and it's a square. Okay, well it doesn't line up and work with the other cells because it's a square. So, pre it, and that's fine, that would be, uh, you know, benign cancer. But when all of those square cells start deciding to reproduce themselves, instead of making circle squares, they're make, uh, circles, they're making squares, then that's cancer. And then once those cells learn how to do that, they start teaching other cells how to do that, and that's how it spreads. So if a person has metastatic cancer, both sites need to be coded. When there is documentation for a primary or secondary cancer, but the site is not indicated, you use this magic little default code uh, for cancer, which is 199.1, and that code indicates that there is another cancer, whether primary or secondary, but you don't know what it is. And you'll see terminology like that that will state, you know, um, uh, metastatic cancer to the lung. Okay? Well, well, that means that's a second cancer. It moved to the lung. Well, where did it come from? I don't know. I don't have any documentation on that. So it would be 199.1. And if you reverse that and say, uh, you know, she has breast cancer and it has metastasized, okay? So you can code the breast cancer. Well, where did it go? I don't know. There's no documentation. 199.1 takes care of that. So that's your default code when you don't know, and it works for primary or secondary. So if we scroll down a little bit more... So plain English, use this code for malignant neoplasms of an unspecified site, both primary and secondary. It goes both ways. So what is benign? The term benign refers to a condition that's a tumor or growth that is not cancerous. So you've got all those little circle cells, and all of a sudden they may, you've got like um, three square cells. Well, they're not doing anything, but you know, they may go ahead and remove it and check and make sure it's not trying to replicate itself, but if it doesn't, then it's considered benign. It's a tumor. It may be something that someone doesn't want uh, or, or causes problems. It's another thing. Just because it's benign doesn't mean it's going to cause problems. It uh, just means that it's not going to spread someplace, and uh, but it can still bother other tissue. So in general, benign tumor grows slowly and is not harmful. However, in some cases, you have benign tumors that grow big enough to be found in uh, uh, near blood vessels or in the brain or the nerve or different organs that need to be removed because they're causing a problem because their cells that don't need to be there or their size is hindering some function of that organ. They're not metastatic. They're not trying to teach other little cells to be like them. They are just in the way, more or less, so they'll be removed. That's the difference between uh, excuse me, benign and malignant. You, you want to make sure you know whether it's benign or malignant. And most physicians are very good about documentation, and they'll say benign tumor of um, 
the breast or malignant um, mass in the lung. You know, so, uh, but you can't code one way or the other unless you have a definitive diagnosis. So you need to make sure you find out pr from your provider which one it is. Okay, unspecified. Well, that just means you don't know. So if uh, there is no documentation to say that the, it is either uh, metastatic or benign, then, uh, or it hasn't metastasized, there's no verbiage there, it's, you're going to put unspecified. Sometimes the doctor may not know yet. The pathology report hasn't come back, and so he will say that, um, you know, it's, it, um, he doesn't know, and then you would use that unspecified code. You don't really want to use the unspecified code unless you have to because you want to code to the highest specificity, and um, your insurance co companies aren't going to like unspecified, most likely. So you want to make sure that you have that. Another little trick to know, though, is that if a path report is available and your, docu your document uh, for your op report states that you know he doesn't know the tumor's been sent off, the pathology comes back and it's malignant, you can code malignant for that op report because you have the documentation now to back it up. So um, that's something that, to, to keep in mind. Pathology reports trump uh, what the op report said because it's a definitive diagnosis given by uh, uh, a provider. And uh, let's see, one more thing to remember about coding the cancer codes is, is there more underneath there? No, no, that's the end of it, isn't it, Lauren? Um, oh, no, you're Okay, right. yes, I thought I had said more. Uh, is that down. there's tumor registries now. And so whenever you see a term like lymph node involvement, that means the cancer has moved into the lymph nodes. Okay, so when you're doing tumor registry, once a person gets diagnosed with cancer, they're going to do staging. And you'll hear people say it's a stage four or it's a stage one. So this is called TNM staging. Tumor for, it's a tumor, lymph nodes in, metastasis M, and those will get numbers behind them. And that is uh, based, they do that for statistics. And in fact, a lot of times you'll see jobs that are uh, tumor registry coders. Uh, hospitals will have them just so they can take care of the coding that's done just for the staging and the, co um, the, the treatment of cancer. If a person, now this is another note that you need to know when you're doing the cancer coding. If a person no longer has active cancer because it's been eradicated, removed, or previously excised, you can use a history code to indicate the person had cancer. And I think we did this in another webinar because we'd had a question about history codes. This is a V10 uh, code and is um, divided up into different body systems. It's V10 something. Remember, you cannot use a history code if the person is getting actively uh, treated for the cancer. Now, a lot of times uh, people will get confused. They'll think, well, she, you know, she had a mastectomy and she's not getting chemo and she's not getting radiation. You know, she doesn't have cancer, but the doctor put her on a medication to make sure the cancer doesn't come back. So she's technically still getting active treatment for the cancer. And this would be V58.69. She's getting long-term use of this medication. And if you scroll down, I think I listed some of the medications, just so you'll be familiar. Um, I think tamoxifen was one of them. Uh, here, here we go. Uh, Herceptin, uh, tamoxifen is one you see a lot and some of those others, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But those are medications that doctors will give for different types of cancer. After the person's no longer getting chemo or radiation, they've removed the, the mass, the cancer mass, but they want to make sure that that doesn't, co doesn't come back. And you can be on one of these medications for years and um, up to, I think, it's like eight years or something, I think some women take tamoxifen for the uh, breast cancer. So the guidelines state, and this was a question that came up a few years ago, is if you're getting, if the patient is getting treated with tamoxifen for breast cancer, is are you able to use a history code for them on, uh, because they technically do not have cancer, and the question, the answer, answer was no, you cannot use a history code if they're actively being treated for the cancer, and technically they were. So uh, keep that in mind, and that's kind of the basics about um, ICD-9 coding for, for cancer.
Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.